possible takeaways from this gospel reading, and in this case also the first reading, is this. Peter preached up here, I'm going to go back to it, there is no salvation through anyone else. There is no salvation through anyone else. There is no salvation through anyone else. We've talked about this before that salvation only comes through the Catholic Church and how that was twisted to be heretical in the mid 20th century. Okay, Peter said that, but I think the danger of us Herman, possibly hermeneutically owning that through over the course of two millennia now has been this. The damage has been this. We have sacraments, we have faith, we have liturgy. All of that constitutes and tradition and scripture that constitutes who we are as Roman Catholics. But sometimes there's a, there's, um, a way we own who we are in a way that like the Judeans in the, with the thinking of the temple is an exclusive way, therefore exclusionary way. For instance, let me give you a couple examples. Sacrament. You can think of sacraments as the required condition for our salvation. Or you can think of the sacraments as signs of what Jesus has already done for us. It's, it's a mind-stretching way to think of it. I was in graduate school when a professor took that second tack and said, sacraments are a liturgical way of pointing to where God acts. So that we who celebrate them, not just the presider, but we who, who are part of the church community in which all sacraments are celebrated, in community, we stand up and we say, look there, there's God, God is in forgiving. Oh, look, there's God, God is in belonging, like the belonging to the, to the group in baptism or the belonging to married people celebrate for each other or the belonging that is part of when we gather around a person who is sick or dying and hold them up to God. So, so the sacra to look at it with that different angle, that different nuance, that little bit of a different texture is, is a huge step away from thinking, yes, I'm Catholic, I have seven sacraments. It, it's a way of thinking them of them less as they belong to me and more as a way that I'm invited to see the everywhereness of the divine. It's a different angle to look at that or the faith, a different way to think of faith. We can think of faith as um, rather a requirement that I need to meet God in the afterlife. We can think of it as a sign of what God does in us. In fact, the old English root of believe is love. People who believe have a sense of love in their lives. Could it be that the way God leads us is kin to the way a good shepherd leads sheep by getting our trust, which involves the human heart? And that's that right there, the movement of the divine heart is what has been reclaimed by God in Christ. We can trust that. So that's one takeaway. Another takeaway. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. This is the hinge right here. This is the benchmark. Some people think the opposite of Catholic is Protestant. The opposite of Catholic is not Protestant. The opposite of Catholic is narrow and exclusive and selective. This is the opposite of Catholic. Etymologically, Catholic means wide, broad, universal. That's what it means with a small c, right? Catholic, which mirrors this movement of God in life. So the opposite of Catholic isn't Protestant. The opposite of Catholic is this. So if we are supposed to mirror 
this God of abundance, where in whom there is no stinginess and no withholding of mercy and a constant stretching, then we need to pay attention to how we belong to that truth. Maybe even in fact, if we belong to that truth. Okay, now one thing to know is that cows, uh, cows are different because they're more confident. I, I say this without knowing hardly like this much about farming, but uh, cows have a little more confidence than sheep. So it, you probably know this. In many cases, cows can get themselves from the barn to the field, even if it's down the road a piece, you know, they just can do that. But <laughs> sheep are more skittish and they have to be led. Because if you go to, if you go, although sheep dogs can do this with their running around and running around and corralling them, if, if you go and like, you know, try to wave them off or something like that, you know, more than likely they will scatter. So the, so the way they can be corralled and brought back to um, their safe, whatever, quarters at night is by leading them. They are led because they recognize their shepherd. And so they're led by, I'll call it attraction. That's really what Jesus is intending this. He wants to lead us by attraction. He wants to move us not by disturbing us, but by attracting us to move us ahead. 